All right, and uh, let me see here. Yep, we're on. Welcome. Let me double check. It's always like this in the beginning. <laughs> double checking. Technology, man. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sort of like back in the days when you had magic. Mm -hmm. You know? Telepathy. All right, awesome. We're on. It's perfect. Welcome uh, to both of you. Um, today we're doing uh, an English Hakerslep. So I'm going to go through the normal beginning, which is a presentation of what the Hakerslep is for those of you who are is listening for the first time. Hakerslep is a podcast, live broadcast type of uh, show where uh, we, where I bring in my friends, me and Knut bring in uh, friends and inspirations and people who are living outside of the normal um, norm in society who are not living the standard what we say in Norway the A4 life <laughs> 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 and have, have created uh, something spectacular uh, or want to create something spectacular and people are thinking outside the box and today we are so fortunate to have uh, San Perian in our studio slash bedroom <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sam has been here for a couple of days and did an amazing uh, inspiring really great speech yesterday um, and mm -hmm. talk and had a workshop in um, in the passion immersion apartment and we're still uh, digesting I think mm. uh, so uh, say welcome to Sam Oh. Welcome! Woo! <laughs> <Hey>. Go Oslo! <Oslo. laughs> I have some cool, because I have some uh, notes from yesterday, or mental notes about from yesterday. And one, well, first of all, uh, could you, for those of you who don't know who you are, uh, just present yourself and oh. talk about, like you did on the beginning yesterday, and talk about your story or uh, your 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 thing. Well, okay, uh, hmm. that, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I was uh, was I gonna say like maybe his his short version. <laughs> My or, short version, yeah. But I yeah. not necessarily. I mean, this is the. Uh, well, I'm Canadian, and uh, for the last ten years or so, I've been traveling, as you guys know, um, to many different parts of the world. I've been to uh, well, lots of places. I've been to Oslo three times, and. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing lectures and seminars and workshops and talks and various sundry things like that uh, related to uh, men and women. And well, basically, I'm talking about women. That's what I'm doing mostly. <laughs> my my story, to make it really short, was I was I was born and raised in northern Canada, uh, poor in the forest in the in the in the wilderness. And uh, until I was 20 years old, 18, 19, 20 years old, um, I lived very deep in the wilderness and I didn't have uh, a lot of the normal, I wasn't in a city until I was like almost that age, or I was that age when I was first in a city. That's crazy. And, uh, and so when I came out of that, I didn't have any understanding about uh, uh, how to be, uh, how to it really relate and interact in a in a modern society, and um, and so for you know since those days I've been trying to understand it and trying to I don't know if I'm going into as much no, no, detail as you no, want, no, uh, yeah. But um, I've been uh, I you know I, I went through the normal course of corporate job and did this you know bought an apartment did all these things, and then about uh, seven eight years ago I checked out of that whole system and I just been traveling. I'm uh, as you guys know I'm down to carry on only. Yep. And I just drift where I'm invited, and um, and it's good. It's like uh, uh, do lots of talks, and uh, it's been fun. Cause uh, uh, you talked about how you came from the the woods, like yeah. literally, and then out into the free world, and then you uh, you hustled yourself, or, yeah. or should I say, up to uh, just like a movie. You just like uh, what's a what's the movie called? Uh, Catch me if you can. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just got you know talk it's kind of like it. that actually because yeah? I didn't have any education I didn't have but, any yeah so how did you do it uh, um, 
I took a lot of like, I, I, I tried to educate myself as best I could. So I would try and, for instance, I, I did by myself the Canadian um, uh, futures or, or the Canadian uh, stockbrokers yeah. uh, course. I did it by myself, which is a rare thing because normally you're associated with a firm when you do that. And it was very difficult financial stuff. And I took that and educated myself as a stockbroker so I understood you know commodities and futures and that kind of stuff yeah. I self-educated myself with computers and programming I'm complete computer nerd still? And I, yeah still but I, I don't do anything with it anymore but I completely miss I mean my website I've done myself yeah. 100% myself really yeah. nice I didn't know that yeah it's 100% me huh. and um, and you know the technology moves along and, and I haven't been you know keeping up to it but I still because I have it in my blood or something mm. I still can look at the new things that they're doing and understand it really and apply fast and your and, old yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Same, yeah same with me and I can just like I don't need to train in it or whatever I just can figure it out yeah. so I'm I'm a natural when it comes to computer stuff so so because of that I educated myself in that in that regard mm. and then I was in charge I was got in charge of like IT department and just you know just kind of like stack things up that's like the it. exact opposite of living in the in the woods yeah in charge yeah. of the it <laughs> department i tell you and we didn't have a lot of electricity when i was a kid and so like i didn't I, you, know, you know i wasn't in computers when i was 13 14 15 like other like normal kids today are mm. i didn't really come into it until i was i bought my first computer when i was probably 21 or 22 wow yeah and i figured it out from then i don't think i, I never knew until this weekend like how much into the wild you were actually living like <laughs> yeah we how talked about far it into the wild <gasps> it's incredible you were wearing what was the shoes you were wearing you were wearing like moccasins moccasins Moccasin, yeah. You know? yeah Moccasin, i like. had a fur hat i wore it all the time <laughs> because i made the hat yeah you had you had brown bears no no not brown bears we black had, bears in the yeah in our in our yard all the time <laughs> we were yeah, chasing black bears and we and talked about it in, 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 on the breakfast house. you know the thing i loved the most what was that uh as a kid is chopping wood really? i did it i, I love chopping wood. i still miss it like i can imagine i uh, love it as well you do huh? easter yeah. time we were at the cottage and we had this masculine chopping <laughs> wood competition <laughs> the first thing i ever bought i remember my first 20 dollar bill really i was old i was probably maybe 12 or 13 when I first got a $20 oh. bill my first time that's a, we're, we're poor and the first thing I ever bought with my own money was an axe <laughs> and I was so proud of that axe it was like this axe and I thought wow how how beautiful I was so proud I, I've never told you this before <laughs> I remember walking I'm 12, 13 years old in the town of 2,000 or 1,500 people where I bought this axe yeah. and I'm walking with that axe and thinking, yeah, people must think like wow <laughs> <how cool is he?"> <laughs> <laughs> I was so proud <laughs> bizarre yeah do you think do you think your background with the uh, with living in the woods, <laughs> in the woods uh, has has affected your masculinity or preserving your masculinity in a way or well I came out of there not very masculine, masculine? not very confident in it really way. yeah because I was like I didn't I didn't have a lot of we were poor and we didn't have a lot of um, you know, we didn't have a nice, uh, you know, a, as nice a house as other kids. You know, they have, they had, you know, normal yeah. walls. We had like insulation walls. You know, like, um, and so we all I, f foolishly, I always felt like we just weren't as as cool or as advanced as the other kids. And so, um, and so I came out of it with a very low confidence, low okay. self confidence. Yeah, yeah, hmm. insecure, and, and the whole thing, and. Um, uh, but what is, is interesting though I spent all since I was 20 years old I spent years trying to put that behind me trying to hide my past trying to say I'm not part of that world anymore and trying to to get into the mainstream and and, and, and educate myself and fit in yeah and then I spent the last 10 years trying to get back out of it again like going back to simplicity and and I feel I, I, I really feel guys I'm going I'm more and more I'm going back to that yeah. going back to the forest I feel it yeah. Not necessarily the forest itself, but this. I remember when I was a kid, I would have. I had a. I had a, a kerosene lamp. What's that? A coal oil lamp, like oh, a, yeah, like yeah. a right. Only the wick and yeah. I had that. And uh, a feather blanket, for my bed, a small bed. And 
pretty much the clothes that I had on my that I wore. Yeah. And I had that, and and I would write in a journal every day. And uh, and the simplicity of that with that lamp, and you know, and and sitting in in I don't know, is there something about it? I returned to that when I went to Nicaragua a couple of years ago. I, I returned to the simplicity of just like a bed and, and a desk and and nothing else. Yeah. And the same clothes. And uh, there's something in a really freeing or in, empowering of them. I don't know what it is. It's just like, I, I kind of miss it. And, you know, and I've been trying to stay away from it all these years. Mm. But I miss like sneaking through the forest and, and, and being in awe and wonder of mm of that uh, um, one of the speakers from 2010 summit Rob Brinded yeah he talks about uh, he has a theory that or he to- we talked about he told me that when you walk into nature there's very little <coughs> there's very natural edges there's natural for- natural forms okay, and yeah. it, it affects your mind and mm. uh, he said that being in a city or being where the yeah uh, city type of it's all structured place. form it's all structured squared and very unnatural and it affects uh, your mind that was his logic and oh. and that's why he told everybody to look up more and to to breathe some fresh air and get into the nature and um, it definitely yeah. has some effect to be in the nature yeah. I love it as well you feel so grounded you feel so fresh you feel so it's like you feel so real it's funny kind how of. it's so funny how 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 distant we are from it like yeah. how we distance ourselves yeah. so much from it forget it almost most people don't it don't go into <laughs> nature more than maybe once a year you know if you live in the city yeah. and they go camping with the, yeah, you know, like they a, go camping. with all the modern yeah <laughs> the tea, little with tv facebook running. on the phone yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> stay up to date <laughs> but you know it's like it's it doesn't necessarily mean i'm going back into the forest but it but back to the principle of it like yeah the, the yeah. spirit of it you know what i'm saying like I love being in the city. I love being in the heart of a city where there's coffee shops and bookstores and the people. Are, I love the center yeah. of a city. I don't like in between the no, wilderness the and suburb. Suburb. Yeah. <laughs> but at the heart of the city, I really, really enjoy. Yeah. But to live that same simple simplicity of the forest in the heart of a city, that's it's, it's the most beautiful thing I can imagine. It's great. Is it the simplicity without pos- without possessions and obligations? It's or? it's not so much possess it's possessions, but it's also obligations obligations yeah you know like we fill up our time so much mm. yeah. like we you know we our thursday evenings are free so we sign up for pottery lessons yeah and then yeah. our wednesdays are free and so we we sign up for this and then we're rush 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 yeah. we have all these appointments and things to do to try and increase the yeah. quality of our lives and mm. we're just cluttering it all up but the simplicity to me is like like i don't do much <laughs> No, that's a, some that's really fascinating to me because uh, you are like a huge uh, guy within the community and also within other communities, and you talk, give speeches all over the world, and you have this amazing, huge following of the Arsa Morada, and yeah, and you kind of like legend, but still, <laughs> when you come here, it's like you do nothing and just like just want to write or <laughs> take a walk or have a nap or have a four hour long breakfast and talk about it's true beers, beers. you know <laughs> so that's and then that because you talked about that and that's uh, that's uh, an egg and scop was that that's a quality, quality yeah. that um, i admire and also i remember you said a quote on the workshop yesterday i don't remember the quote but it was about don't hurry yeah but don't settle or something goethe said that the german poet he said um, do not hurry do not rest yeah and it's brilliant yeah like i feel like you mastered that yeah just keep um, exactly like um you know and thoreau said um you know we we fritter our life away in details simplify 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 and i think it's like simplifying everything even simplifying all the things we're trying to cram into ourselves and our activities and our you know, we're we're frantically trying to live this great life, a quality life. Yeah, we're 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 rushing to live a, a this peaceful, beautiful life. Mm. You know, it's like yeah, it's like the sleep, irony. You know? the irony. The irony. Yeah. Yeah. I remember what was that? It's I, like sleeping furiously. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do it? You know, it's like. <laughs> I think it was Tony Robbins who told this story, and one of this Tony Robbins, you know, yeah, of course. So he uh, he uh, told this story of of uh, a guy like <clears throat> rich people coming to because he has this island on where is it on uh 
his island is in Fiji. Hi- Fiji, yeah, in Fiji, and there were that's a people come there traveling, millionaires, billionaires, oh, yeah. traveling in, they're traveling in there. And he told the story of this this guy, this fisherman who was uh, living there, like a, a native there, and he was living there, and, and he had this conversation where he uh, he asks this billionaire like. Whoa, 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 about his life and the rich guy talks about all, all the things he's done in his life and all the things he's created and all his billions and everything he has all the wealth he has accumulated yeah. and everything he has done in his life and he's he's old now and 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 he and the, the fisherman asks him uh, so what so so why so i can come here and i can just relax on the beach i don't have to do anything i can fish all day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the irony because you could do that anyway guy, right i've been doing this he says but that's exactly what I've been doing yeah. my whole life. Yeah, exactly. And the irony just like poof, smash, and that's what you were, you uh, what's fascinated me so much about. Yeah, uh, how you I feel your life. I feel like 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 different because in that way because I see people rushing and doing their thing and and I did it too. So I like I know it. I, like I was a corporate you know yeah uh, vice president and um, yeah and I had a house and you know the car and like all the fancy furniture and and you know work 60 hours sat in the boardroom all the time and um i don't know it's like uh, i see my future like s- the simplicity of things it just amazes me Sim- even simplifying the time it's like because i i would rather s- i would rather spend time having conversations with you guys over breakfast about mm. the bears in Norway and Canada like we did yeah. Yeah, for two hours <laughs> then to have to like I've got to rush and I've got to do this and I've got to this obligation you know I think in my mind obligations are sin commitments are great because there's a mindfully chosen yeah yeah. And when we say there's I have to do I, well, right. I better do this because it's a difference between proactive and reactive exactly yeah, yeah. and the obligations to me are when when it's like I, I should do this otherwise they're going to get upset with me or I better go because I should make an appearance and those feelings we don't want to do it and we obligate ourselves to do it or you know we, we sign up for for karate lessons and then after six months we're we don't really want to go anymore but we paid money for it so we should continue <laughs> to go you know that feeling and 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 um and I think that's we think it's wrong yeah I really do because it's not mindfully chosen we're just like we are now reacting. We're, as you said, we're 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 having the world bounce off of us, yeah. as opposed to the other way around, which is saying, you know, make a mindful choice. I want to do this, and I have the freedom to choose this or not to do it. And so, simplifying all of this stuff. And that's like that's creating. That's I get the same feeling by creating something because it's proactive. It's you choosing, yeah, and then you create something uh, instead of being. Uh, created upon that's yeah. not but you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. 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 yeah affected yeah affected yeah, yeah. But it, interesting my um, my mom and my stepdad uh, when she was 50 years old they had built this uh, this life of they had the big house the car the yeah boat actually they bought a boat as well right before and then they decided to 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 sell everything buy a car and drive down to Africa, Zanzibar. Oh wow, that's great! And then they moved to Zanzibar, so we joined. We joined them, and I actually drove six months from Norway down to South Africa and up again to Tanzania. Wow! And they they had the same realization or the same mindset as as you heard that is simplify, 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 and yeah. strip it down and do what you want right now. Yeah, exactly. And everybody should do what they want right now, cause like yeah. I o- always say on my on my workshops and stuff, if you do something four days or more that you don't love to do like you really love to do then you have to change your life yeah because what's the point of a life like and, and not even four days yeah, yeah yeah exactly what's the point of a life then yeah what is what is the point you know we we have this 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 notion that if we get that car then then we'll now be happy if mm. we get that raise and get more money we'll get happy if oh, we get that we girl we'll be happy yeah and we go through that our whole life is that pattern yep and it's never enough I know oh. a guy in Vancouver has a Lamborghini and uh, spent, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars for this thing. And he's showing to me the door where the door closes, like a, like the door meets the, 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 frame, the frame of the car. Yeah. It's, it's not even. It kind of like tighter here and kind of like wider here. Okay. So, in, and he, 
his whole life was this frustration that even this, no matter how much money he throws and stuff, <laughs> it still isn't perfect. Yeah, it's still you know. He was so frustrated about that. He was frustrated about his Lamborghini. Not yeah, because being it, it's, for that money, it should be like a perfect, yeah. you know, and you go look at any, uh, any any other car, like a cheap little car over here, and it's like a nice line, right? He should work harder. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> he should push himself. He should push himself more. <laughs> you know, he was never satisfied, never happy, because nothing was ever... But it's, what did he expected it to be, and so he'd go try and get the next We thing. hear that all the time in um, when we work with guys. It's... If like earlier today we heard it. If I just can have my uh, my, if I can just get up in early in the morning, everything else will be will be handled. Work out. I get, we'll okay. Work yeah. Out. Of course. If I can start to. If I myself get to all that, yeah. the girls, I will be happy. Or right. if I, we hear that all the time. Yeah. And and the, 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 it's hard to 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 help someone realize that the girls or the getting up early the or the lifestyle the things is a an effect of yeah. uh, you actually mastering your the life first and being <laughs> well, that's proactive that's exactly what you said to do then, to do it now what you want to do yeah. yeah then those things fall from the sky for you mm. it's like we think we have to do this first and then this first and then but you have to do the then first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. But it's it's uh, some people. Uh, so yeah, true. Yeah. It's so true. Yet it's it's. I understand that it's so hard to grasp. Hard to do. You know, and also the illusion that you have to do all this stuff first. That you have to have the money. You have to. Yeah. Because it's an illusion that that um, what do you call it? It it, it over overflows the whole of society. Yeah. Everybody has that mentality, and you get you get that. We're educated that way. You, yeah. Exactly. We're educated that into that system. Right. So. For someone to break out of that, they have to face a lot of resistance. Yeah. I can imagine, like, like, because that happened with you at some point. You know, yeah. you, you you went out of the forest. Yes. <laughs> you know, you said goodbye to all the bears. <laughs> you you came into the real world, <laughs> and you did this corporate thing, yeah. and then you you even became a vice president or something like yeah. that. You know, advisor yeah. or something something uh, big within the corporate yeah. world. What happened? You know, when what? You know, what I used to. I tell you. I used to go into the president's office because it was a Japanese-owned company that was in charge, and and the Japanese told me my office was ne right next to the president's, and they told me that you're basically they were grooming me to be the next president of the company when he retired, and so I was like in every meeting, I was in every high-level decision, I was like basically right there, um, and I used to go into the president's office, and you know president like everyone's like you know that's the president you know? I used to go in his office and kick the door shut and sit in a chair and I'd look at him and say uh, I would say do you ever get tired of it and I would ask him like I would where I had a yeah. I talked to him for an hour or two hours like do you ever get tired of it you're the president of this company do you and I would ask him I say what you have this big beautiful mansion type house with all this you know cars and all this kind of stuff you're the president of this company what do you do when you go home I was fat. I want to know. Like, yeah. what, what do yeah. you do? What do you and your wife do yeah. in the evenings or weekends? And he says, "Well, what's I your passion? We yeah. just we do what everybody else did." I said, "Do you entertain? Do you have dinner parties? Do you have hobbies?" And not really. We just kind of mm. stay by ourselves. And wow. and you know, and every year I saw him, a great friend of mine, president of his company. Every year I saw him get a little bit lower and lower in his chair. Yeah. You know, and I thought. <laughs> And you went in there every day asking him this this question. I would always ask yeah. him, like, I want to know, don't what, yeah. like, what's, what's the point? Do you, do you yeah. are you having fun in life? Yeah, you know, you've you've got this. He'd buy a canoe and it'd be up in the in in the rafters of his garage. You know, like, yeah. and you buy a pool table and it sits there and yeah, like, uh, are you ha are you enjoying this? Is this is do you have the spirit of life? And he would say, well, you know, at my age, what else can I do? And I'm thinking, man, like, and and so one day I, uh, I mean, I used to think about this a lot, obviously, talking to him and just thinking about it, talking to my girlfriend and stuff like that. And one day I went in and I gave a, a letter of resignation, two months' notice, that I'm quitting, huh. and uh, shocked the Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> shocked the the uh, the the management of the company I was working at. Shocked the whole company, it's because it was completely out of the blue with no. There's no reason. It was a good company. And shocked myself. 
really shock myself. I'm like, huh. I would wake <laughs> up in the middle of the night, what did I do? <laughs> wow. But, um, and then... Were you financially secure at the time? Did you have security and no. that you would be okay? No. No, because I didn't, you know, I'd done all the whole thing and like the mortgages yeah. and the debts and this, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, I sold my apartment and I had all my, you know, I had a $5,000 purple leather couch, for instance, right? Like, and all of yeah, these for things. For no reason. For no reason. Yeah. Other, other than I hope it looks good if people come over. Yeah. Should have gotten a chameleon coach. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I had all these, these things and I just, I, 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 I sold my apartment and I gave everything away. I didn't sell one piece of furniture. No, I didn't sell a stereo. I didn't sell anything. I gave it away. Give it away. I, I, I called my ex-girlfriend and said, come take whatever you want. Was, my... was it scary at the time when you did all this? No, it because stuff? it was like everything kind of hit me. Everything was at once. My job ended. Yeah. My house sold at the same time. Yep. My And I gave the furniture away. So it was like a real strong shift. Yeah, like a, a yeah. line in the sand, like a, a yeah. giant leap. And uh, the scary part was the, the leading up to it, I think. And the actually yeah. doing it was like, wow. It Very was like, easy. It was a freeing. Yeah. yeah you yeah. felt great. You feel like, wow. You, you you sort of reach a, a threshold and then yeah. once you reach that that was a decision yeah, yeah. A clear decision and then you just did it yeah. I can yeah. relate because yeah. when I really took the big decision to re take responsibility in my life yeah, that was uh, something of the same uh, I, I, I bought into this huge uh, self-development program uh, you, I didn't have the money and then did it and after the decision after it was done yeah, it was effortless it was natural it was uh, and the same thing you know for me guys it's like I just said I looked at the president bless his heart and um, I looked at I would sit in the boardroom and um, I had have Japanese guys on this side and Canadian guys on this side and I would be like leading a meeting for three days trying to solve a problem like a okay. a problem of you know uh, I won't go into details but it doesn't matter but I, we're in this intense meeting yeah. I would sit there and I think, what do I really care about what we're talking about? <laughs> yep. I'm here for a paycheck. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I lived two lives because I would like, like, I was wonderful at not taking any work home with me. Like a lot of people just you know, fret about their job at, in the evenings, and I would I completely separated. I would do my sixty hour, sixty corporate hours a a, a week, week, and then the evening I was it was completely separated. Where I would just like I wouldn't think about work and I would just like, but you try and live all your best hours in in those hours that you're free and then yeah. you get your your you go on two week vacation somewhere a holiday somewhere and you try and live all your moments for that year in that <laughs> yeah those and it's uh, yeah. becomes and stress said, and yeah. pushing instead yeah and also the the fact that I was all of my corporate climbing all of my trying was to try and get away from my poverty past and my 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 forest you know trying to yeah. put that away yeah. but you weren't conscious of that at the time mm, yeah i don't think well maybe it was i don't know okay but you didn't talk about it so much no never no. talked about it and uh and then and then you know, you just realize that when were you the happiest when i was sneaking through the forest yeah i was happy <laughs> I, I, just that when simple. i had a little lamp yeah <gasps> And I could write. I could freely write. I could spend hours and hours reading a book or writing. It's so simple. What? Yeah. It's the greatest thing. I used yeah. to, when I had the corporate job, I used to think, wow, you know, it'd be kind of nice to be stuck on a deserted island for six months with a bunch of books. Yeah. Or imagine, it would, <laughs> I would almost think, wouldn't it be great to actually <laughs> go to, about that once, yeah. wouldn't it be great to go to jail for three months and have nothing to do but eat and, and read Dude, books? Dude, we just talked about this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what how what kind of thinking what kind of a life do we have that we would rather go to jail? Jail, yeah. <laughs> and in Norway you have these wonderful jails. And in Canada yeah. too. Oh, okay. <laughs> wonderful jails. You go golfing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so free time. Nobody's having like you. a resort. <laughs> no <laughs> obligation. Yeah. Get some But the off. funny thing with all this <laughs> is that you I think it's really hard. I feel that you can't say it to someone. They have to experience that. That's a good point. Yeah, because you can't yeah. say, like, live your passion Just and do, uh, do what, what you, you like love. and stop doing everything you're doing yeah. now and go and do what you love. I feel like you can't say that you have to somehow. It works in passion immersion because yeah. we we relate to people who have the seed, yes. who has the thought already, and then we 
inspire and work with them every day and they inspire each other and it's a mastermind and you and you you are surrounded by people who are living their right. passion but other than that like i haven't experienced like being able to tell someone to do that and they just get it it's it's you're exactly right and like there's guys who have have said to me you know um uh, they've said to me, but you know, you did that whole corporate thing, mm. and you know, so we have to do that too <laughs> to understand. And I'm thinking, uh, and there's nothing you can say because yep. they think that this they have to do that first, or they have to go down that path to then and, and then Prove come to some, yeah. to free themselves in some way. Yeah. And if only they knew, you know. Yep. And there's nothing you can do or say, and it's like, um, it's a curse. It's a it's a curse. Yeah. There's nothing you can do or say because they have to. They feel like they want. They have to go find that out first, and then, you know. Yeah. That's and man, I tell you, if only they knew. <laughs> if only they knew. There's never been a greater. Uh, I've never. I'm completely. A, a reporter asked me recently. She, she said to me, "Are you happy?" And I said, "You know what? Because um, my, my my first <clears throat> impulse is, yeah, of course I'm happy. Mm. But then to rethink really about it, I said." What I feel is great alignment. Yep. I feel aligned. Yep. And by that I mean, I feel like no matter what happens, I am doing the best thing I can to put my feet forward in a direction I want to go. I feel like I'm on a path. That it's I, right. It's it the, feels it's right. The right thing. Yeah. You know. You know that. You know the feeling you get when um, uh, your birthday comes around again, and you're like. <gasps> And that feeling you get, that little anxiety, because like, wow, the year flew by. It went so fast. Time flies. And how is it possible? It's my birthday again. And, and Or or uh, the summer flies by and the winter's starting again. And all the plans you had for the summer you didn't do. And, and it's so fast. The summer is so short. And that feeling of you get that little bit of an angst, that little mm. twinge in your, in your, in your, in your stomach. Um, what's amazing is I used to have all the time when I was in the corporate world, another birthday comes along and, you know, the year flies by. Wow. And I don't anymore. Because I don't have that. A birthday comes along and it's it's immaterial. It doesn't It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter because every day I feel like I'm... Like, here I am in Norway. Yeah. Hanging out with you guys, talking about bears today, which is the greatest thing I could possibly be doing right now, in my mind. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Yeah. And it's... And it's... Uh, I feel... So, I feel very much aligned. I feel like a very calmness around... Uh, you know, like the Goethe quote, which is, you know, do not hurry, do not rest. It's like I feel I don't have to rush like I did all my years of trying to attain and trying to get, you know, and pay these things off and to get those things. And it's like I don't have to rush. I can, but I'm not, I, but I never rest. Like I never rest. I'm 24 hours, 100%, all the time thinking about these things that I'm trying to create. I but, never need a break. <clears throat> People say, don't you need a break? Something. I'm on the break. The yeah. Me doing this is yep. the break. Yep. Yeah. Feel right. like I feel what you said there. I'm on the break. Feels like yeah. when you're doing your passion, living your passion. Yeah. That's like you're on your break. Yeah. And still not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah. it's very congruent. Yeah. I think it's a good word for it. And also, I feel that you have an ability to, like you said, you were in the corporate corporate world, and then you asked yourself. Am I really interested in this? And then you ask the the, 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 the the head guy, Yeah. are you really, what do you do? Are you happy? Yeah. And all that stuff. I feel like you have uh, an ability to um, stop and look at the broader picture, uh, like a bird perspective. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then like, is this really something? Well, <laughs> just open up. Uh, not the food is done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doug. Should we open it? Or? I think she just wanted to say that. Okay. Um, and I think that ability is something worth uh, mentioning because the ability to stop and look around and ask yourself crucial questions. And yeah. like, is that's, this... That's powerful great. questions, yeah. Yeah, is this like, is this really something yeah. uh, that I want? Instead of just some, a lot of times people so do stuff, yeah. yes, and then like, uh, yeah. bec and they don't even think about it. You just their bodies take it for granted that this is what they want to do. They go to a party, and of course they go to a party. It's a Saturday, but yeah, is exactly. it really what yeah. I want to do that's right exactly now? Exactly correct. 
that's in exactly. essence, I think that ability that's you have that. Yeah, that's so. in essence what you did as well. You yeah. ask questions. You questioned yeah. everything. I and questioned we, everything. Yeah. I want to know and like, like and and it's exactly right. It's like we don't we react. We live a life of reaction. We don't live a life of of choices. Mm. We don't make choices. No, we don't make any choices. Which is to say that we're choosing, you know, mediocrity. Really. Yeah, we're ch- we're really choosing. We're choosing to live a life of of average. Uh, and from cradle to grave yeah and uh because you're not making a mindful choice which is what you're talking about which is to examine and ask the big question and say who what do i want we don't even ask that this is why guys are trying to figure out girls because they've never really asked them what do i really want mm. when it comes to women they just assume that they just assume yeah i have to have this and uh, you know they they follow their impulse we follow our, our yeah it's we, the impulse it's not even yeah. assuming because it's not uh proactive assuming it's yeah. just an impulse yeah we have so, a yeah. wish yeah. for something and 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 then if you really examine that wish what do you re you know why is it that that you know we don't know we just wish we had that we wish i had this fancy car well why why what is the you know what is the the underlying what do you what do you want out of that you know like and uh and nobody asks those questions they just say i just uh, uh, so i wish i had that car and i'm gonna spend the next five years getting in debt and scrabbling and fighting for it and getting that fancy lamborghini and then I, and i'm still not happy with it hmm. you know i know yeah that's <laughs> you know you know <laughs> yeah that's, it, man you nailed it's it. great it is it is <laughs> and it's also what you said you said uh, in your workshop you said uh sometimes just asking the just asking questions not that need, not necessarily having the answer but just asking the questions can make all the difference in the world i think so i i don't the the answers are unimportant yeah that's the truth the the great thing is to ask questions ask those big questions because the questions themselves are what are what creates movement the questions are you know you're seeking mystery as opposed to seeking answers all the time everyone's looking for mm. like to solve something get yeah. an answer and 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 in my opinion we should put all that away put away all the solving put away trying to find answers mm. you know mediocre minds sit in answers and great minds sit in questions and so always keep you know heading toward that mis- that the profound mystery you know and and uh what what exactly appeal, appeals appeals you to always seek mystery i'm trying to you know because i think that one of the greatest traits we can have and if we don't have it or we have it in small amount we can develop it which is curiosity yep. yeah i think i had this this my own theory is this intelligence is curiosity that's all it is right yep. i was curious about computers yeah i was you know i was i was fascinated by so i had a very strong <clears throat> curiosity about them so i was naturally good with computers i didn't yeah. take any formal training of, it, of same, any kind exactly right? the same with me yeah. and and if you're if you're curious about anything you're naturally good in it yeah it's the way it goes yeah. so intelligence if someone's you know a great scientist it's because they're very massively curious in that <laughs> yes so so that's why i'm saying that we should always pursue the questions because curiosity begets curiosity curiosity creates more curiosity and it is the greatest thing you can have you know we had it when we were little, little boys you yeah. know we had wonder we would poke at stuff and yes. We were so curious, yes. yeah. And that spirit uh, will save us. Like yeah. curiosity That's creates so great questions, which makes us gives us the movement yeah. forward. And also curiosity in things that may be outside your comfort zone. Right. Curiosity of things that may be horrible or frightening, or uh, you be shit nervous, scared. Even or whatever. be curious about those ex- what you're feeling. Yeah. 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 Like. Like I tell guys all the time, they say, well, I'm going to go talk to the girl, I'm nervous. I say, you know what you do? You, when you're talking to that girl and you're feeling nervous, stand outside of your body a little bit. Like, check out and just watch yourself. Observe yourself. Mm. And just make a commentary to yourself. Wow, my hands are sweaty and my, I feel like I'm like, you know, my voice has gone high, high pitched and stuff like that. Just observe what's happening to you. Be curious about that experience itself. Because it is fascinating. Yeah. And because uh, by observing yourself, being curious about how you know you're, that your hand is sweating, being curious about that, uh, you become aware of, of how you are, you know how you are fitting in your body, how you're moving. You become aware of your experiences, and much and, more real. And, and awareness is curative. Yeah, awareness is will is the awareness is the answer. Yeah, that's why I'm saying the questions are great because yeah. now you're aware of what you want ah. to try and understand. Yep, it's not the answer; it's the awareness. Yep. 
that's the great thing. God damn. Now I really got it. Yeah. <laughs> I really got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. And uh, fun thing you started to talk about intelligence because uh, you have this vision of this, uh, what should I say, utopia or this uh, island or house or villa, or whatever, yeah, some kind of gathering yeah. community of people um, with these kind of conversations and questions and minds. Yeah. And we have this vision which is very similar. We have this vision of changing the educational system and somehow, um, or even bigger than that, we want to change the world, of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but of course. But we want to, uh, and, and we, we, we thought that one way to do that is to influence uh, young, or rather not influence as much, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> young, exactly younger people true. and stripping away earlier and letting... For, because schools these days, the guy, the people learning in schools are not curious yeah. to what they are yeah. supposed to learn. So why would they the learn it? Exactly. Imagine if 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 children were curious to learn what they have to learn in school. Yeah. But just that tiny bit there would yeah. change the entire it change world. The world yeah. It will change the world. So that's very in line with uh, the like you said with computers you know you said computers like i i never had any formal training in computers but imagine the complicated advanced things we can do with a computer i can build a computer yeah i can fix a computer in the electricity circuits and i have never had you know like yeah an education with it oh and there's there's so many people going through computer science degrees yeah who are doing it because they think well maybe i'll get a good job yeah I took, but they don't have the curiosity about it right i took the exam in in yeah uh, in computers oh yeah i asked them when i come in i saw them here we go uh, there was an exam in computer science which we took in one hour i saw the first no uh, it smells good yeah. i'm listening yeah should we stop the podcast and eat <laughs> <laughs> that's great just uh sit down let's talk <laughs> one hour it took for uh, a dig- like a, a, a class that should have taken a year to, t- to take just because you were curious and you dug into it on your spare time yeah, because yeah, you were yeah. interested. But, but it's like you said with the answers and the questions that in school you you are told to memorize answers and not ask questions and be curious. Yeah, exactly same, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At the same time. And it's exactly like you know, the, the vision we have. And that's what you guys want to do. Yeah. That's great. Can I think it's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the, about the, the Casa Morata. My, my vision is, hey. I call it Casa Morata, which is based on Arza Morata, which is my, my brand, my philosophy, yeah. which is fake Latin for the art of... Fake Latin. <laughs> yeah, the art of love. Yeah. Arza Morata, Casa Morata. And it's... Um, Casa Morata, I've been, I had a vision of this for probably... Six seven years which is a place on earth where this kind of conversation can can thrive where there's there's people in the space in the common space who are uh, who can who can, you can you, who are, are adding to the the energy and the intelligence and the curiosity of the space itself and and yet it's got private quarters so that we can you know, go and write and, and paint and or whatever we need to do and, and have space and time alone but it's it's living in community, mm. and um, I love the idea of it. I love it, love it, love it. And it's filled with the the, the essence of the female spirit, which is completely necessary. It's not a, like a, a frat house with a bunch of guys, and uh, mm. and there's and there's a great um, there's a great. Uh, I, I've been seeing this as it'll be my next home. I'm homeless. Yeah. I'm completely homeless. My next home will be someplace on this earth. Uh, and, and, we, and we we create it now in a kind of a temporary way whenever we rent an apartment in Poland or, or Brazil or you know Panama or something like that. Um, but I, 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 I can see a villa that has this kind of great gathering of minds, of great minds. And, uh, and because the tide rises all the boats. Yep. And, yeah. you know, and it's the locus, uh, the, 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 the place of, of gathering that... In the internet world, we don't have that anymore. In no. the internet age, because we used to, we used, we used to, have, to it. have it. There was um, you can brought you know this probably even better than me, but there was like before when, when, like the, the greatest artists we had in history. When it comes to sculptures, when it comes to music, yeah. when it comes to painting, 
all those people they could get together they could, and they did they did they did they found each other yeah and because of that they all became great yeah they created entire movements like the the impression impression impressionist exactly. painter movement came from these guys all gathering together and having a showing together in you know in, in paris yeah and uh you had you know the lost generation of steinbeck and and uh you know uh hemingway and and, and gertrude stein and you know and all these um, Ezra Pound and all these people and they, they gathered together and they would hang around in the coffee shops just to be near that kind of energy and it, and, and it raised the whole energy of the group but they were physically interacting like in a, in a group and it's like you know I have this this theory that you know if, if someone wants to really change life and really uh, uh, be successful in something uh, then hang around your heroes yeah. And that's what those guys did. There is writers in America and and and, um, and Canada and v various places. And they f and they would hear about this happening, and they said, "I have to go there." Warhol did it with the factory and the the painters and the and the people would come and want to be involved in this. You know, the yeah. the Beat Generation, Ginsburg and and uh, Kerouac and and William Burroughs, they all fed off each other. Yeah. Even even um, uh, Tolkien and. Uh, uh, C.S. Lewis, right from the yeah, yeah, exactly. They would walk together and 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 plot, and they both created great works. Yeah, mm -hmm. two minds work like three minds almost. Yeah, but it's also great. In, in modern times, like like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, yeah, from very young age knew each other very well. Huh. But he, so. you know, not even that. But they had in in that part of the world, in in that part yeah. of California, it was Bill Gates and in all. There was a whole gathering and group that all fed off each other and like. Yeah, you know the the old computer club mode? back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it and it created all these giants, Wozniak and mm. Jobs, and you know, yeah. and 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 today with the internet, we don't need it anymore. We still need it, of course, but we don't. We can gather. Yep. We gather in forums and news groups and and Facebook groups, and we have a constant interact. We're constantly interacting. We we're 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 twittering, tweeting with you know uh, you know famous people. But we don't have the physical gathering together and the, and the meeting of minds, and we've lost something because of it. And so my vision is to recreate it, as is yours. It's also related with the showing up uh, thing you talked about. Yeah, very yeah. much. Do you think you need to show up to 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 get, to get yeah. it? To, oh, yeah. To get the whole experience. Yeah. It's great. I'm I'm fascinated by the whole idea. <sighs> Me too. Very much. <laughs> very much. I could see like a vi not even a village, but like Silicon Valley. Like a yeah. huge place. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. Right? Easily. Like the, the movie uh, with Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come, you know? It's yep. like. <laughs> because why? Of course they will. Yeah. How many people do you know that say, what, what do you, I, want to, I, I would love to come around and be around what you guys are doing? I get it all the time. Tons. I get emails time. every day from all over the world, yeah. guys saying, can I, I would love to come to where you are and spend yeah. time. Right. Yep. The passion immersion is kind of it's like a small, small step towards that. Yeah. Actually, Cause it's, it's you know what it is. It's a learning ground for you, and just like my castle yeah. mod is a learning ground for me too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's how we're learning how to do this. You should do a knuckle pound just for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, people like you are coming in there. You know. Yeah. Would That's you, what you want. Yeah. Exactly. Because it adds to the to the energy and yeah. like you bring in a different spectrum and a different. So dimension amazing. and it's like and yeah. it's good for the people in space so can amazing. you talk about the the Romania meetup yeah I'm having a in two weeks because this relates very much to you basically gathering the great minds yeah. you know right? I have a okay. network of men that we've developed over the years called the Amirati and these are guys who've taken our programs and you know have, have said we want to have a better conversation with women and and have a better we want to live as leaders in this world. Mm. So they 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 take a series of commitment questions, and and it's a it's a solemn pledge. We take we hold them to it. We hold you know we're they're, they're held accountable, and they become the Amirati, which is based off Ars Amirata, which is so it's also fake Latin, <laughs> but it's the name of our group. Yeah, the Amirati, and um, and these guys, we have the senior guys. I guess you could say the senior ones, the ones who have really stepped forward and said, what else can I do? Uh, there's a lot of members of the Amrati. We've got hundreds all over the world, um, and they say we're living these principles in our in our homes, in our lives, our communities. But there's some that are saying, "What else can we do? Yep. We want to be further involved." 
And so we're gathering in Romania in two weeks in Bucharest. Yeah. Um, and we've got probably 30 guys from coming from around the world, plus some great women coming too. And uh, to have a four or five day brainstorming session of how we can, of what we're talking about right now, how we can take this forward, how we can use the, the skills and the talents and the desire to help of the people that are members of, of this of the Amirati group, how can, how can we leverage that so that they're involved and they're part of something too, so that we, instead of you know us trying yes. to build everything all you know one at a time by ourselves, yeah. board by board. So um, I think it's it's a brainstorming, it's a it's a coming together of the minds, and I'm convinced that it's going to change a lot of lives. This meeting in two weeks, yeah. I think it's going to change the lives. We're not going to miss it. Yeah, no. of course. I think it's going to be brilliant and and. We have it all structured and all figured out, and at the same time, it's going to be a very much an open. Uh, let's flow, yeah. and that's really. We need to have that. It's great minds yeah. coming together. Believe me. And when great minds come together, you need to have that openness yeah. as well to have those questions. Uh -huh. coming, you know, have openness for that. It's, uh, it's amazing. I'm looking forward to. You know, it. it's like any of these. Uh, we were talking about like Mormonism today at, over breakfast as well, yeah. and. Uh, you know, y you read a lot of these religions that started, um, and they had a lot of people that were, you know, s studying certain things, and they had the same ideas, but they're scattered in, you know, in 1880 and 1860 and stuff like that in in America, for instance, and so and they're in their their towns apart, sort of thing, and then, and so what they would do, uh, I'm thinking of, for instance, the Seventh Day Adventists. They had these people who were studying the Bible and saying, wait a minute, there's, there's, we're all coming, we all have the same belief system. And they had a general conference. They, they said, everybody come and join up in, 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 I think it was Battle Creek, Michigan or something. Let's, let's come in, in Michigan. And so these people came from far and wide who all kind of wanted to believe the same thing. And that, again, there's your gathering. And if the tide rises all the boats, and they created mm. a common structure, a common organization, which has, you know, uh, it, millions of people members around the world today hmm. and I'm not saying we're trying to do that but it's the principle that the principle is is to put these minds together and then and then let that blossom into what it needs to be as opposed to saying oh, I'm gonna make it like this and because it will blossom it the will. right way if you put the right minds together I'm convinced of it it's great <laughs> it is wow <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm excited you always say it's great wow it's great <laughs> I love it and like there's a, actually a guy here uh, who's uh, online listening uh, named Richard and he's asking can you ask San what place he has traveled that was very different than expected huh. um, that's, a good that's a good question um, if I were to say a place that's different than expected I would you know I would probably say Romania Okay. Because you know, Romania, we have this this notion that it's like you know, just just now arriving out of communism. Yeah, and I have they, you know, like, it's like blocks of buildings. Right? And all people. of us in, in in North America and 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 in Western Europe, we have this this thinking that it's like kind of a a, a backwards country. And I tell yeah. you, it, um, it's a brilliant country, and it has all of the everything we have. It's got they you go they have got beautiful shopping malls with skating rinks in there and. Hmm. You know all the same stores and and all the same uh, all those things and there's a real uh, there's an optimism in the country too because they have come out you know 20 years ago from communism there's a real optimism that they're now moving forward to, to the young people are really optimistic I feel and uh, it, they apologize because you know their buildings are communist era and you know kind of falling apart and stuff like that. and they apologize for the for the look of the city hmm. but uh, the but uh, but I find that I, what I'm saying is I, 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 it, it wasn't what I expected. You see Romania and you see the, you know, the stereotype of like, uh, you know, it's a very farm country and, and this kind of stuff and, and everyone's in wagons and you know what I mean? Mm. But it isn't. It's like a, it's, the most, it's, it's one of the most beautiful countries I've been to. It's fantastic. Wow. And the people are great. Yeah. Do you think uh, you talked a lot about uh, Romanian women and how they're feminine uh -huh. and giving? Uh -huh. and what do you think? Is that because the guys are more masculine, or wh where does that come from? I don't know. You know, I know. I I noticed it in Ukraine. I noticed it in um, Poland. Mm. Anywhere in the east, Eastern Europe, it feels like there's a real spirit in the women of being really feminine, really generous, 
and and wanting you to be okay yeah they take care of you they want it and and it's and it's uh it's a great feeling they just you know they so i i found that in in eastern europe i have uh, that great or that feeling a lot and i don't know why i really don't know why what do you think about the like the in no feminism and post all around there what is that in English? Feminism. Feminism in the seventies. We had that in the yeah. and then no and equal rights for men and women and yeah. all that has affected how um has affected the polarity between the genders. Yeah, the, yeah. the guy in who was who was the guy who wrote the book from Women Are from Mars and Men Are No, the other way around. <laughs> men are from Mars, Grey. women are from Venus. Grey. Grey, yeah. He was on this uh, big, big talk show in Norway and he said that Norway you are uh, gender blind he said he, he freaked out on the show he was furious with this uh, this wow. equality where where women and men in Norway were so like, equal we, we lost we lost the masculinity and feminine polarity he said I don't know uh, yeah what, what do you think about the you know I tell you guys feminism movement or the um, I think that the goal of feminism was to uh, the feminist movement the goal was to get equality like to balance it out yeah the problem is 50 60 years later uh we didn't get it we didn't get we didn't get equality we got sameness yeah yeah right yeah men have become I don't know like women and women become like men and, and yeah. th- we've lost the polarity so we didn't get the great equal equalizing balance of, of women being strong and feminine powerful in their own right and feminine and men being strong and masculine and powerful and masculine we didn't get that greatness we had this yeah. mush we have everyone's all soft and blended together and there's we're not sure and we're suspicious and and uh you know and we have this whole the polarity is like it it's it's drained out of us and in north america for instance in the workplace you have to be 100 percent asexual because you could get in serious trouble if you if you know if you make a comment to a, a woman or something at her or she makes a comment to you that was sexual harassment and this kind of stuff and so we're expected for our eight hour work day to be 100 percent blinders on uh asexual creatures no gender whatsoever and then in the evening turn it on and you know and all of a sudden and, you and, should and, be. and now and now there's polarity and we wonder why we can't turn it on in the evenings and, and weekends and stuff like that and and look at women like women and men and women look like at men like men so um i think the goal of the feminist movement was a good thing and i think we and we didn't get it the, the women lost and the men lost yeah we failed it's it's failed that's what i think yeah i completely agree with how the yeah. well I'm, it's you can see it as well how how people walk and how they talked about this so yeah, yeah their body language and how they how talk when, and when how a they woman, when she walks so feminine and you can see how she wow. walks and how she how she moves herself it's, it's just, rare it's, it's so rare, rare now and it, but it's so amazing it's, yeah it's, well, it's at so least here in Oslo it's rare yeah. uh, and I tell you when you when you see when you meet a woman who and and I've met some for sure who are really attached to their feminine side and I don't mean they're they're weak yes, they, they are not weak yeah. they're very strong they're very n- intelligent they're very clear eyes and they're in when you meet a woman like that it breaks your heart because you realize how we're the, missing, how the how, world is how the world's changed and and the same thing when women are starving for masculine men instead we got we have a lot of guys lifting weights and buying fast cars but they're not masculine they don't have the sense you know they're so women when women meet a, a truly masculine man they cannot stop thinking about him because it's so rare yeah it's so rare we've we've it's all blended and we're missed you know we're, we're when we see it it stops our heart it stops us we have to pause and and really give thanks for that beautiful feminine spirit thank you because it that's why you know eastern europe there's a great feminine spirit there and and it kind of bays it kind of forgives men it forgives us in some way, it, you know, it, it washes over us and it cleanses us. And okay, it's all good again. Gives you energy. <laughs> it gives you energy. A lot of energy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I love it so much. <laughs> I can tell. What do you? What, what do you think is? What is masculinity? Um. I think it is this. Uh. I think it is like being, at, dedicating your life to a passion. 
I think that's what it is. If I were to say like in one sentence, and that mm. sounds sounds very broad, mm. and I don't mean purpose. I mean a passion. I mean like something just to understand what you care about and to head for it. Like we think we have to have this grand mission statement. Like oh, I'm gonna be this guy who I'm on this. I am on this. My mission statement is I'm on this earth to empower others and to inspire and blah blah blah. Right? We make these great mission statements, but I think instead of that, it's like to to know what we care about what we're passionate about. And it could be as simple as I want to grow a garden with a wife and two children. I would, that, that's as noble of a, of a path or mission or purpose in life, if you want to call it, as anything else. And I think masculinity is attaching yourself, your eyes on that passion and heading toward it no matter what the cost. That's what I think it is. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, like I make the distinction like like people say to me what is a beautiful woman there's a lot of hot women in this world but there's very few beautiful women you know what I'm saying yeah and and men understand hot women I was just writing about this in my book just yesterday okay men understand hot women but they know what to do with them there's a hot woman she's got a front and a back he knows what he, he knows what he'd like to do with that <laughs> right? but beautiful women confuse men they don't know how to they don't they they kind of like they look away they don't know what to do and so uh, this is why beautiful women are always lonely because they're not really included in the world of women and they're not really included in the world of men and uh, uh, I think that essence of um, I don't know I think so what I'm trying to say is men do all of the things they're trying to do to get hot women in their life very few are trying to get uh, trying to find ways to have beautiful women in their life and you cannot have beautiful women in your life if you're not beautiful yourself. And so uh, I think, you know, all the things we're trying to do, buy a nice car and this beautiful a bachelor apartment, so it is to get, you know, is to get a hot woman on our arm as opposed to a beautiful woman because beautiful women are not attracted to those things. They're attracted to men who have a great passion. That's why they fall in love with starring artists. Yes. Right. Yes. Yep. And then because they're, yeah. they're 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 devoted to that that yeah. that art to the day they die, and that is what beautiful women are attracted to. Hot women are not attracted to that, and whatever. You see, so there's in my mind that's true masculinity to go forth to your passion no matter what the cost, and and you know you, the hot women look at you and go whatever he's poor, or he's like whatever they don't understand you just like the men don't understand the beautiful women. I I can go on and on. Anyway, I wrote about this yesterday, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, before, I hate to break this up, but uh, you have a plane to catch. Oh, it's true, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we have commitments, but talk short about uh, your book, because it's... Uh, yeah, I've been writing my book. Just to drop a tease for, <sighs> for people. I've been writing my book for... Uh, started about six years ago, and, and writing it really s heavily and seriously for the last two years. And it's a book of ideas, uh, kind of a philosophy book, but kind of like... A, like what is the mindset of of someone who moves through life differently than others and trying to capture that and um, it's not easy <laughs> um, and it's almost done I can feel like the like it's it, the first draft is done and now I'm just repainting it and just trying to get the right tone and get the right feel um, and I'm fighting for it it's like I'm it's like I feel like it's like I've got to get this out of my system and then I can like put that out there and I can like go wander around in the forest or something you know mm -hmm. it's um uh, i'm happy with it i think it's the uh, yeah. i i think it's very original there's some things in there that i've never heard anywhere in this world and it's uh it's about men and it's about women but it's also about the whole dynamic of you know female spirit masculine spirit it's about beauty my book is about beauty i'm writing about beauty what does it mean and so and it's a book written to women essentially I'm not writing it to men I'm writing it to women it's like a like a it's like a it's a brain dump to women this is how it goes this is this is how I see you this is why you respond you know and this is what I do and this is what I say that you respond to yep kind of like that so there's the tease so <laughs> look for it guys I'm fighting to get it done I am <laughs> so much looking forward to reading it. <laughs> me so good me too
That's great. All right, we have to wrap it up. It sucks big time, but I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this. I know I have, and I'm gonna listen to this again, definitely. Okay, Make great, notes yeah. and stuff, and just uh, experience it again because this is yeah. lovely. Uh, we, um, oh, we need to mention uh, in about a month. Oh yeah, a month <laughs> from now. We're having this incredible, huge workshop that we have been uh, planning for, I don't know, three months, maybe, wow, yeah. or something. And um, it's, it ties very much into all of what we have talked about today. And it's going to be like an action-oriented workshop, where it's not only... It is going to be conversations like this, and a lot of breakthroughs for people, but also it's going to be a lot of action, a lot oh, of great. drills, a lot of getting into the system, getting it uh, integrated to your body and to your mind by experiencing it yeah. as well. So just like we talked about, you can't just say something and then expect, uh, hmm. well, sometimes you can, but yeah. So we're really, we Experiential have- Experiential is always better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have planned this for a long time and then um, we're really psyched about it. So we need to tell guys about that. It's, uh, you can go into, read about it at seltlit.mortenhake.com seltelit.mortenhake.com uh, don't get hung up on the seltelit bit because it, it, it it's really more about building your lifestyle your passionate lifestyle your attractive lifestyle and your dream but you know you have to yeah. niche it down somehow to to, to to hit it hit the spot but uh, so go check that out definitely and um, yeah go check out that's great I think you guys are doing great work here yeah, where do we where the people thank you so much for showing up and for yeah. uh, guys want to uh, see the next um, podcast just uh, like the Hawker Shep uh, Facebook page or also add us on Twitter and you can ask anything yeah. whatever and uh, that's about it what's the last thing where do people find you yeah oh my 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 website is is my name zanperion.com zanperion.com Z Z A N P E R R I O N dot com yeah I put it down there yeah below Okay, yeah, there you go. So that's where I'm found, and people can see where I'm traveling, where I'm giving give events, and because you're doing talk. a tour right now, actually. Yeah, I'm. This is my fifth city in the last week and a half, <laughs> two weeks. Wow. I was in I was in Canada, then I was in Scotland, then I was in London, then I was in Paris, then I was in Brussels. Now I'm in Oslo tomorrow or today. I'm in Helsinki, and then I'm in Warsaw, and then I'm in T Bucharest. So that's yeah, crazy. It's a bit of that's a tour. awesome. Looking forward <laughs> to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Okay, guys. In Romania, and thanks. That's it. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.